I'll come out and get you. Oh, that's <laughs> Cats wasn't starting no wars. Me being a Silver Spring dude shouldn't been on their turf, but they never gave me no cobbles. I just left and went to work, came home. Dudes be sitting all on my steps. They be dapping me up, moving their trash to the left. What I'm saying with that respect is Baltimore's respect. So to see them tear it down, that shit hurt me to the day. If you wanna know why we so angry, you wanna know why I'm Say no justice, no peace, no end. You wanna know what happened? The fair degree. I wanna hear you say that. Tell me now. What happened? The fair degree. Yeah, chat with the whole band. Damn, man, this is family. Let's hold hands. Let's start a revolution. No guns, no shooting. We about to end all the pollution. What you do? We're going to go ahead and get started. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a public hearing of the Zoning Commission for the District of Columbia. Uh, to today's date is February 1st, 2016. My name is Anthony Hood. This proceeding is being recorded by a court reporter and is also webcast live. Accordingly, we must actually refrain from 
any disruptive noises or actions in the hearing room, including the display of any signs or objects. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you'll give this evening will be the truth? And then just some of the, the straight on elevations. The north elevation, east elevation, west elevation, which is again is the elevation that we've enhanced since the last hearing. And then some building sections. A lot of uh, the comments that we got, and I think all of us up here, really believe that the city is much more vibrant and livable because of our arts community, and if I don't want to see them moving out. Considered unfortunate in some ways, but rents change in different locales. I really do have some large concerns for the uh, constituents uh, who are there now. They will be displaced. A city once defined by bureaucrats has blossomed into a city with a deeper artistic culture. The idea that up until about 10 years ago this city was a cultural wasteland, as the developers put it, defined by bureaucrats, and it's only recently that a deeper artistic culture has blossomed here, displays embarrassing, seemingly willful ignorance of this city's rich cultural history. It's very special. We won't find another performing arts space like this, period. They're gone. Sonic Circuits has lost um, Pyramid Atlantic this year in Silver Spring, you may be aware, I don't know. Be able to afford a studio, a practice space, a recording studio, a place where they can edit movies or film, that just doesn't exist. There's no infrastructure. We are losing our best and brightest to cities like Baltimore, Richmond, and even New York, which is more expensive than here, but at least there's infrastructure. I'm a DJ. Um, I would like it to be my full-time occupation. What I'd like to see from the city is infrastructure that supports the artistic community. I've applied for art-subsidized housing, I've applied for grants, and been flat-out turned down because I am not a visual artist. So I gave me a platform to um, uh, enhance my skills, which later led to me actually being able to work in an actual lounge and restaurant. Understand what's needed from these artists who like to cook or these artists who are into doing DJing or those who like to do art modeling or to draw or to sing or to rap. Uh, good evening, my name is Christopher Smith. I'm a tenure resident of Washington, D.C. and current Ph.D. student at Howard University. Even African dance studios in Washington, D.C., which aren't, we have a maybe like one left um, because of displacement. I'm moving constantly. I'm shaking, not out of nervousness, but out of discontent and anger. Graduate of Duke Ellington School of the Arts and University of Maryland Arts Programs. MC actor, poet, host of the dopest BYOB Jam at Muzai House at Union Arts. It's life. It is a representation of what we do in and out every single day. And to say that we only have four rooms, 250 feet, maybe if that, square feet, to do something that is life in, is like putting a lion in a cage and telling them to exist. Muzai House, for which I am representing, is a haven for underground artistry. Taking away our space takes away our haven. Dysfunctions are progressively growing community and dismantles our economic growth as we are working to become a staple for demanding community of artisans and audience. Myself and my team support, develop, manage, curate, cultivate the careers of 80 or more artists within the Muzai House Arts Collective. One of the myriad of things I love about my collective is that we have made the minimum space that we have now a haven for 80 plus artists a haven a haven represents a need a safe place a home this haven includes MCs visual artists vocalists musicians poets DJs dancers speakers technicians producers architects who experience an extended period of unemployment due to this possible displacement unfortunately some application processes like the develops arts groups are introducing include high fee high fees and processes where, where one would need to take a loan, show applicable credentials. Most artists don't receive pay stubs, and so it becomes much more like trying to vote in the 1950s. We build artistic entrepreneurs, giving them space to rehearse, create, and network at an extremely affordable cost. Unfortunately, this type of space is not marketed to my communities. So when persons of my similar background, who are minorities, see me as a pioneer for this uh, type of minority-owned business, they have what is called the Muzai Shock literal disbelief is extremely important and this hotel is going to happen this same thing has happened time and time again i've seen this happen in dc we go on tour for two months we come back i hardly recognize a neighborhood and 
it, it, it blows my mind growing up here. 